Let's find out seats, please. It's Aiden. Aiden, aren't you? Yeah. Elizabeth Chen, Patty Gonzalez, and Gail Grabowski. Okay, we're going to go on air. We're going to, okay, so let's go on air. Tell me when you're ready. Okay. All right. Welcome to regularly scheduled meeting of Community Board 5 and tonight's public hearing. Would you please join in the Pledge of Allegiance? The flag is to the right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Um, again, a lot of, we aim for decorum, no shouting, no interrupting. If you want to speak, you raise your hand and the chair recognizes you. I'm the chair, Vincent R. Curie. Um, at least for now, today this is election. Every year we have elections, so pay attention. All right, the first order of business tonight is a public hearing regarding BSA calendar 241-47BZ for property at 16-2325 Hancock Street, block 3548 lot 97 Ridgewood Queens 11385 and presenting on behalf of the applicant is Alexa Landsman. Alexa please. Thank you very much. Good evening everybody. I'm sorry I'm facing backwards to half of you. Um, I'm here from Sheldon LaBelle PC on behalf of the applicant to discuss an extension of term application for 1623 uh, and 1625 Hancock Street. Uh, just a little bit about the history of this site. So this is a two-story... Excuse me. Yes. Ex say who you're representing. Who's the applicant? Um, yes, Mr. Mumaramoto. Um, and his wife, who have owned the property for over 20 years. Um, so we are here to discuss an extension of term application for a two-story building at the site. Uh, a little bit about the site and the history. Uh, this was a variance application that was granted in 1948 and was extended over a period of, of decades at this point. So every 10 years it was renewed. So ultimately, this is a building that is in an R5B zoning district, which only permits residential. However, this building in 1948 was granted a use variance to permit manufacturing 
in the uh, ground floor and have a residential site above. And so per, pursuant to the zoning resolution, we are required once the term expires to come back to the board and to the BSA uh, and to renew this variance. Now, the terms of the renewal are exactly as they were when we came back to this board 10 years ago. Uh, the ground floor is utilized as a woodworking site and as an art shop. And then the top floor is a two bedroom residential unit. So a little bit about the site. It's located on Hancock and Wyckoff Street, uh, Wyckoff Avenue, sorry. I have a few photos. I've, I've dispersed a few presentations and you can see the uh, property and I'll just walk around the room so everyone can take a look at it. It looks like a very standard two-story building. Use the microphone, please. Oh, amazing. Sorry. Sorry. Don't want to face my back to everybody. Just to give everybody a look at the building. Um, the property has stayed the same for over 20 years, and there are no changes that are being proposed today. This is just a, um, a standard procedural task that we're here for. We're just here to get the board's recommendation, go to the Board of Standards and Appeals, present this application, uh, and get a renewal for another 10 years. Um, and that really is the the sum of the application. There are no violations on the site. The owners have been running this, a very nice establishment that has been very respectful to the community and really adds to the community and the neighborhood. Uh, and they would like to continue to do so. And that's really it. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Any questions? Okay. Um, what we'll do is turn this over to the Land Use Services Committee. The, they may call you or the applicant to come before the committee uh, if they need more information. Absolutely. They will report back at the next meeting for uh, disposition. Understood. Okay. Thank you. Right. Next item of business is the public forum. Um, because of the number of speakers signed up, we're going to limit it to two minutes. No foul language, no personal attacks. No back and forth, you're addressing the chair. And if anybody has any questions of the um, speaker, address the chair with, by raising a hand. This is community board business, okay? So the first item of business under the public forum is Christine, is that Busey? I'm trying to read the print. Thank you. Two minutes, please. My name is Christine Beasy. Beasy. Uh, yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank the Community Board 5 Transportation Committee for providing the opportunity for Ridgewood Rides, a civic-minded group of cyclists in Ridgewood, to present to the committee the dangerous and inaccessible road and sidewalk conditions along Cypress Avenue in Vermont Place. Over the past two meetings, which I attended, there was broad agreement that the condi conditions merit the attention of the New York City DOT. In addition, Ridgewood Rides has collected close to 900 digital and approximately 400 physical signatures petitioning the DOT to improve road and sidewalk conditions. I've personally been in touch with representatives whose districts include or border this area and the parks, the Ridgewood Reservoir and Highland Park. I'm coordinating through my council member's office a joint letter including community um, council members, state senators, and congressional representatives in support of our petition asking DOT to prioritize Cypress Avenue and Vermont Place for safety and accessibility improvements to ensure residents of all abilities and modes of transportation can safely visit Highland Park and Ridgewood Rides. It is my hope that the full board will join us in this broad support for safety and accessibility by formally asking DOT to make Cypress Avenue and Vermont Place a priority for improvements. Personally, I live about a mile from Ridgewood 
uh, from the Ridgewood Reservoir off of Cypress Avenue. I used to walk my dog to the park until I got tired of walking over and around dump trash and navigating the narrow sidewalks along Vermont Place while drivers whip their cars around corners and pack closely by dangerously. Giving me my experiences on foot, thank you. I really hope that the um, community board will sign um, a letter to the DOT uh, in support of our petition. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next speaker is Dan Andres. Dan Andres. That's all right. Step up, please. Tell us who you are, where you're from, what your subject is. Yes, my name is Dan Andres. I wish everybody's having a beautiful evening so far today. And uh, I'm a project manager working on renovations, new buildings of that sort. What I'm here to talk about today in writing is regarding parking aspect, regarding the city of Yes housing opportunity. Good day, this April 10th, 2024, regards towards the Queens Community Board 5, fellow constituents, and we the people. I thank CB5 for allowing I, Dan Andres, to speak. I am trained as a project manager. Projects worked on million dollar renovations throughout New York City and billionaires row as well. My opening statement, the following framework particulars. Professionally labeled Car Park Again 3.0 is strongly requested to be utilized in the city of Yes housing opportunities, mm -hmm. namely the new building projects and how current parking conditions are for neighbors in immediate neighborhood area respectfully. The mentioned particulars for this framework, Car Park Again 3.0, is subject to change tailoring to the goals of the Queens Community Board Number 5, fellow constituents, and we the people. The intent to waive the parking requirements on new building projects is the City of Yes housing opportunities. The waiver of NYC parking demand par per new housing project should be uniquely independently decided per land development neighborhood. And to, sh and to make parking demand waived would be to conduct a neighborhood analysis on dividing, dividing respective neighborhood into four sub-neighborhoods. These four sub-neighborhoods are drawn from the epicenter of the new housing project. These four sub-neighborhoods will be defined from the north west, south, and east corner of the upper center of interest. Wrap up. Moreover, these sub-neighborhoods define the city blocks, three by three short-sided blocks, or 1.5 long-sided blocks, period. Also, comma, these defined sub-neighborhoods will be surveyed and canvassed to hear the needs of we the people of these specific sub-neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. The next speaker is Joanna Carmona. So who you are, what you are, what you're doing. Where are you from? So I apologize, I hate having my back to people, but good afternoon, everyone. I'm sorry. Um, thank you for having me. Congratulations to the new board members. Um, my name is Joanna Carmona. I'm currently running for Assembly District 37, which is Sunnyside, Maspeth, Ridgewood, and Long Island City. Um, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of a background about myself. I'm currently an attorney for Speaker Adrian Adams, where I draft union bills as well as doing oversight. Previous to that, I was a court attorney for Queens County Civil Court, drafting decisions as well as doing arbitrations, mediations, and doing a lot of pro se litigation. I was in private practice previously, litigating the Child Victim Act cases, as well as doing the 9-11 Victim Compensation Fund matters. I actually started off as a prosecutor in Brooklyn doing sex crimes and child abuse, but um, before that, I'm also born and raised in the community. I'm first generation Colombian, but also born and raised. I've benefited from a lot of the programs in the community, educational programs, but even something like my mother who suffered a stroke, benefited from Sunnyside Community Services that helped her get a home health aid. So bringing in the 15 years I've had now in the legal practice, but also my ties to the community, and bringing that to Albany to be pragmatic in writing um, actually legislation that we can implement and the, on the community can benefit from. 
I'm being very rushed, so I'm sorry. Um, but also at the current time, the incumbent we have um, has not been effective. So I also want to remind everyone to please go out and vote on June 25th. You can approach me for information and I could give you more on my issues, my topics, but always willing to answer any questions and if there are any meetings you would like me to attend, I'll be more than happy to. But again, please, the primary day is on June 25th. I made it on time. Thank okay. you. Thank you. <laughs> the next speaker is Nicole Zellick. Will you tell them who you are, what you are, what you're here for. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Nicole Zellick. I'm a resident of Maspeth, and I own a school of underwater recreation, scuba, freediving, mermaiding, and I also represent a nonprofit dedicated to underwater safety. And I know it's very niche, but what I'm doing is <laughs> I'm actually knocking on all the doors that I can to try to get attention to this issue. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm here to talk about uh, underwater education and breath hold safety. Some of you have heard of shallow water blackout. Um, the issue is that we don't have an understanding of hypoxic events and the lifeguards don't have it in their curriculum, and New York City's response was to ban breath hold competition um, and post these posters that are, have really dangerous advice. So I'm here just to uh, try to get people to care. I have a petition. Um, free, uh, breath hold competition is one of the safest sports out there. It's also how I make a living, and it's so hard for me to find access to pools that will let me teach breath hold safety. I'm pretty sure that it's extremely widely misunderstood and really dangerous, and we have nowhere to dive. There are no masks or snorkels or fins allowed in New York City parks or beaches or pools, which is crazy because where are we supposed to go underwater and enjoy the underwater world? <laughs> um, so just wanted to bring awareness to the issue and uh, maybe ask folks after the meeting to uh, sign a petition and just make somebody care about this. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. You could put that in, on a table in the back after the meeting, people could sign up. The next speaker is Tanvir Mangat. Tanvir. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Tanvir Mangat. And just want to thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak today. Uh, I'm part of the Ridgewood Rides uh, group. Uh, I was, through them and through their community outreach, I was made aware of the campaign to study the Cypress Avenue uh, and sign the petition uh, for DOT to do that. Um, so I'm just sharing some of my personal like observations in terms of accessing uh, the Highland Park area. Uh, so I have the privilege of working remotely, um, and it's good in many ways, but for me, it can be isolating. So mental health-wise, I find going to green spaces very helpful. Um, currently, it takes me 40 minutes from my residential er area to get to the park using public transport, and it's about 17-minute bike ride. Um, but I find myself going to Prospect Park, which is double the distance, and double the time just because the riding there is much safer for me. Like the mental load to get to the park area just seems not worth the effort. Um, or just, yeah, I, I just fear for my safety uh, many times. Um, so yeah, I think in terms of like those secondary tertiary benefits that come with accessibility and not just biking, uh, foot, pedestrian, um, you know, just making it safer for all the community members to have access across all socioeconomic uh, backgrounds uh, and ages, I think, would be tremendous for the community. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to show my support for the board to sign the petition uh, for DO to, to do a preliminary study and, and, and uh, recommend any uh, improvements. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, David Pombianchi. David, tell them who you are, what you are, why you're here. Hi, my name is David Pombianchi. Um, I live in Middle Village. And I've heard a lot of people come out and they talk about the 
representatives from the state talking about the New York CO2 emissions reduction. So I've been doing a lot of reading, and I know not everybody has time to read about a lot of the things, but what does that really mean to everybody? And just to get a different perspective, uh, I come up with something that's, so you don't have to read a lot of books. It's uh, YouTube, and it's about an hour long. It's called A Climate Conversation. It's very simple, very small, easy to look up. So I'm just recommending to get a broad perspective. You know, you don't want to parrot science and you want to really know what you're talking about. So I, besides some of the books I've read, I kind of like this climate conversation and it'll give you a different point of view on some of the things that they're, you're going to have to make a lot of changes with the whole new, and by 2050 or something, they want to get rid of all of our gas lines or whatever. I'm not really sure exactly what they're looking for. But very simple, a climate conversation. Easy to look up. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The next speaker is Ulrich Nishan. Ulrich, I hope I got that right. It's okay. <laughs> I got it, thank you. Um, hi, my name is Ulrike Nishan, and I'm a Bushwick resident, uh, an avid fan of the neighborhood um, that is Queen CB5. I'm um, here today to express my support for building safer pedestrian and cyclist access to the Ridgewood Reservoir. I just want to say when I was a kid, my family always lived near a park. It was a large part of my childhood, and that's how I developed a curiosity about the natural world. And I investigated plants, bugs, and trees, admired butterflies. But when I got older, um, I was even able to bike to the park or walk there. And even before that, you know, my parents said I would walk or bike there. It was really liberating to be able to do that and experience the fresh air and exercise. And now as an adult living in Bushwick, when I walk out my front door, all I see is concrete and cars. I don't see a safe place for, place for kids to explore and I almost never see a butterfly. Um, as you probably know, most of Bushwick has been designated um, by the state as a climate disadvantaged community and my neighborhood surrounded by factories and super fun sites. We suffer from higher than average temperatures because of the lack of tree canopy um, and our neighborhood is higher than average asthma rates. But our closest access to a, the cooling properties of a forest and the mental health benefits of a forested park is Ridgewood Reservoir. Um, it's a great park. I visit it often uh, to attend NYCH2O events or to volunteer as a New York City Park Super Steward. But when I visit the reservoir, and this is something you've already heard, it's harrowing. It's, it's a terrible experience. I'm white knuckled biking there. Uh, they're, you know, dodging cars or whatnot. Um, and I know that most people, they're not going to want to take that risk on. Um, and uh, they can't afford to, or, or they, they don't want to. Um, so when you decide today whether to sign the resolution, or, or whenever you decide to sign the resolution in support of safer access to the reservoir, I just want you to think about all these people who don't have access to the reservoir. But in particular, think about the kids who were stuck at home. Their only option for outdoor space is uh, concrete sidewalks. They're most likely sitting inside. They're not able to breathe the fresh air, or learn about the natural world around them. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, Anna Song and or Wendy Liu. Sorry, Wendy isn't here, but hi, I just wanted to thank everyone for letting me speak. My name is Anna Song and I'm a student at Barnard College of Columbia University. I don't currently live in Queens, but a lot of my family members do. I just wanted to bring awareness to potential changes that would be beneficial for the Queen's Surrogates Court given the upcoming elections. Um, the Queen's Surrogates Court deals with disputes over inheritances and adoption for all of Queens. With elections coming up this year, I just wanted to note so that we need more translators in the courtroom to accommodate for the diverse community of Queens. And another change that the community would benefit from seeing would be extended court times for those who work during standard court hours and can't um, afford to take time out of their work. Um, echoing what was said before, primary dates for voting are June 25th, and it would be great if we can elect a candidate that recognizes the need for these changes. Thank you. Thank you. The last speaker under the public forum, Paul Kerza. Could you step up to the microphone, Paul, because of the cameras? Good evening. Um, this is the beginning of the, my 52nd year on this community board. 52nd years ago, 
I, <laughs> I was at Fred Haller Sr.'s office on Myrtle Avenue, and that's where the community board started, was the planning board then, and we had 18 members. And after I was appointed to the board by Claire Shulman, the borough president at the time, she said, I hope you will never disappoint me. And I said, I hope I never will either. I think I did a pretty good job. Um, I'm here to let you know that we've begun cleaning, the Greater Richard Restoration Corporation has begun graffiti cleaning throughout all of Board 5. Um, let me give you the phone number. 718-366-8721. 24 hours, you can leave a message. This is the beginning. We began April the 1st. This is our 32nd year of cleaning, and over the past 33 years, we have cleaned 4,500 locations. Most of them are repeat recidivists. Last year, we cleaned 652 locations. The number keeps on going down, so we're getting it under control. It costs us about $90,000 a year to run the program. Two-thirds of that is picked up by our local banks, and the other one-third by generous donations by people in Ridgewood. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. With that, we'll close the public forum. Next item of business is the chairperson's report. And that is uh, me, Vincent R. Curie. First, I want to start off by thanking all of the uh, those board members that were not renewed. Um, they did a wonderful job over the years, some for 30 years, some for untold number of years, and I want to thank them for giving up their time. So tonight I'm going to introduce the new members that have been appointed. I'm going to ask you to take a microphone at the table, whoever is called. Tell us who you are, what you are, and why you're here. So the first one, Elizabeth Chen. Hello? Hi. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Elizabeth Chen. I go by Betsy. Um, I was a Bushwick residence for a resident for 10 years as a renter, and I purchased a home in Ridgewood two years ago. Um, since then, I decided that the minute I moved in, I wanted to be involved in the community. I want to raise my kids here, so I joined the local community board. I applied last year, didn't make it. Got it in this year, and I hope I can live up to the standards of the amazing people that were here for 30 years. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Matt Gonzalez. Maddie. 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 I'm sorry, Maddie. Hello. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Maddie Gonzalez. Um, I live in Middle Village. Uh, what I am is I am a mom, first and foremost. Anything else is secondary. Uh, I have served on the PTA of district schools for around six years, currently serving in my son's school as well. Um, love this area. My children grow, grew up here, are growing up here, so obviously my next step in, in terms of helping or serving was on the community board, so thank you. Thank you. And then we have Gail Grabowski. Gail, got a microphone? Okay, can you hear me? Okay, my name is Gail Grabowski. I've done a few green projects in my community, Glendale, and when I realized there was an opening on the board, I uh, was very happy that I was appointed and I wanted to work with the community board to continue my interest in green projects. Thank you. Okay, so the next one is Danielle or Daniel Haridia? Danielle? Daniel. Yes. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Daniel Haradia. I am so happy to have been appointed by Queensboro President uh, to be here. Um, I've been, personally, I've been in this community for about five years, um, but my family has roots in Ridgewood since they came to this country from Dominican Republic in 1984. So it's a big part. It's a big pleasure to be part of this, uh, part of the community, and to be an eye and ear for all of our elected officials and all of our community partners who need to know what's going down on our streets and in our communities. Thank you again. Thank you, Christopher Herman. Hi. Whoa. Hello. These are very good microphones. My name is Chris Herman. I uh, I. Uh, run a small independent school in Jackson Heights called the Garden School, um, and I live in Maspeth across the street from Frank Principe Park. And I used to volunteer for the CB5 events when I was uh, a small child, and so it's a, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Next one is Naho Matsuzuma. Naho? Absent. First meeting, not a good sign. Remember that, folks, not a good sign. Charles Ober, Charlie, way hiding. Oh, now it's on, okay. So uh, Charles Ober, I've uh, been a resident of Ridgewood for 44 years. When I first purchased my house here as a young man, so I've grown old here in Ridgewood. Um, for about 20-something years, I have served on various community boards, such as Greater Ridgewood Restoration, Ridgewood Property Owners and Civic Association. I just finished a three-year term as president of the property owners. And I'm currently executive, uh, um, executive vice president. So my involvement in the issues in the community are deep. Uh, and I have a lot of concern, and one reason is the third time. I'm an example of you need to apply several times. It's not a bad thing. Shows you really want to be here. So this is my third uh, uh, application, and finally I got appointed. So my concern over recent years is, you know, we've always been advisory, but we always took a big, um, they always paid a lot of attention to what we had to say, and I'm very concerned about sort of the diminishing, uh, diminishment of our voice. And that's one reason why I stepped up again. And I want to, I will tell you that as part of uh, the letters and, 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 and documents and the things we do with the original property owners, we always say, and this should start at the community board level and it should not be taken away from us. So I'm, I'm gonna be part of that effort to make sure that we matter. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Enrique Rosa. Hi, everyone. My name is Enrique Rosa. Uh, my friends and colleagues know me as Rico, so feel free to call me Rico. Um, really excited to be here. I really joined the board um, because I've been in the community for the last 10 years. I've watched it grow, I've watched it develop. I even remember when they first put that Starbucks across the Myrtle Wyckoff Station, and that's when I knew, okay, it was time to get involved and step up. Um, so I'm really excited to be here. First, I really want to take the time to really understand my community a bit deeper and also to have a more positive influence here and to get, hand, get my hands dirty and be um, first and foremost on the front lines. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I, I do live in Ridgewood. I've lived in Ridgewood for the last four years across from Rudy's Bakery. Thank you. And the reason I'm going through names is if we have a vote, we need to have a quorum. We need to have people here. So tonight I'm going to the absentees. Michael Bick is absent. Okay. Bob Tremelli is absent. Sal Crafasi is absent. Daniel DeBrucker is absent. Steve Fiedler is absent. Ed Leto is absent, he's working. Um, Naho, we already have him. Melissa Rebecca is delivering a baby. Is it? No, no, no. <laughs> Wrong one, okay. 
Ken, Ken Rayberger is under the weather. He's not here. Gainel Thapa. And I think I've covered everyone. Gary Giordano is our district manager. John Meyer over there is the associate. Uh, Kathy O'Leary is not here. She's in the, in the office with Pat. Um, so we'll continue with the chairperson's report. Is anybody down? Can anybody find an iPhone on the property and bring it down here to get it from somebody from the meeting? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> okay. Has everyone seen the minutes? Any uh, corrections or comments? Okay. Yes, Kathy Massey. Can't hear you. Do we have a second on that? Pick one. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any object? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay, the next thing is liquor licenses. I have to read these. So these are the applications that we comment on. We can't uh, deny or things like that, but we comment. So new liquor license, Olivares Mix LLC doing business as Ridgewood Taco Factory, 6889 Forest Avenue, Ridgewood, is a restaurant, is that correct? Yep. Liquor license renewals. Grove Productions LLC doing business as nowadays, 5606 Cooper Avenue, Ridgewood Bar and Tavern. Grand Grand Jam Grand Jammer LLC doing business as Windjammer. They just Filmed a movie there the other day. 552 Grand Avenue, Ridgewood, 11385 Bar and Tavern. Beer Wax Queens LLC doing business as Aftermath NYC, 1680 Madison Street, Ridgewood, Bar and Tavern. Bermeo Food Corporation doing business as El Manaba Restaurant, 341 St. Nicholas Avenue, Ridgewood Restaurant. TMI Inc. doing business as Knockdown Center, um, 5219 Flushing Avenue, Maspeth, and it's listed as a cabaret, is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, okay. New Wine and Beer at Cider, Abracadabra Creative Food Inc doing business at Abracadabra Magic Diner, 566 Underdog Avenue, Ridgewood a Restaurant. Cafe 490 LLC, 490 Grand Avenue, Ridgewood Bar and Tavern. Wine Beer and Cider Renewals, YNCNC, doing business as Mr. Sushi Japanese Restaurant, 5812 Myrtle Avenue, Ridgewood Restaurant. Other notifications, J.R. Massmith Restaurant, Inc. doing business as Ocean Prime Bar and Restaurant. Um, what, did they, what did they do here? Corporate change. I'm oh, sorry, John? Corporate change. Just, just a corporate change. Oh, yeah. Corporate change. Mifford Corporation doing business as RLL. 779 Wyckoff, Ridgewood Restaurant, and it's doing one, two, three, is what? Method of operation. Method of operation, correct, okay. Um, Rico's Chicken Corp doing business as Rico's Chicken, 7427 Metropolitan Avenue, Middle Village Restaurant, Wine, Beer, and Cider, and it's a ch class change from wine, beer, and cider to a full liquor, wine, beer, and cider. Okay. 
Anybody's got any comments or questions on those, give us a call at the office, please, so we can look it up. That's done. Building and demolition notices, none in Glendale, none in Maspeth. Middle Village, we have 693366 Road, is a house demolition at block 3048, lot 43. Ridgewood, we have 1863 Star Street, construction, block 3395, light, lot 43. Again, any questions or comments on those, uh, give us a call at the office. Uh, let's see, so I did that. Liquor license, alcohol, beverages, that's it. Anyone have any board members, any have a question, comments for me? New members, uh, you understand what we just did? Okay. So that's how we conduct, this is where we conduct our business. Next item of business is our district manager's report, Mr. Giordano. So welcome to the new board members. Thank you for being here and for your interest in the community. Uh, we, I think, have a long history of being a really good and effective community board, and we are quite non-political, and we want to try to stay that way. Um, and I'm sure you know we have all of Ridgewood, all of Maspeth, all of Middle Village. Well, not all of Maspeth. Some of Maspeth is in Community Board 2 area. Um, the industri part of the industrial portion of Maspeth is in Board 2. But we have all of Middle Village and most of Glendale. But technically, when you're on Metropolitan Avenue, no, no, no. When you're on Union Turnpike and you cross Woodhaven Boulevard, you are technically in Glendale until you hit that Long Island Railroad trestle that is after the stop and shop there. That is all 11385. So Home Depot, as far as I know, is in Glendale. Um, so we just went through alcoholic beverage license issues. So we, I consider that to be really important because one of the biggest problems that you could have is in a neighborhood is if you have a bar or something bigger than a bar that's causing a lot of problems. And people coming out drunk and uh, people waddling out of the bar, the bar at three or four in the morning and they could get run over or they could get robbed. And we've done well with, without being, you know, overly vigilant um, in working with the 104th Precinct. We don't have too many problem bars. And if we do have any problem bars, I intend that they won't be a problem much longer or they will be shut down. And we have not had much difficulty in getting that done. But there are times I'll need your support and I'll need votes with regard to that. Um, we have done very well at getting sewer projects funded uh, where there are flooding conditions. And a lot of those projects are multi-million dollar projects. So we got a big project done in Middle Village in the area of Penelope Avenue and 74th Street, $20 million plus. Calamus Avenue, 69th Street, and Maspeth to try to relieve flooding in Maspeth. I think $25 million plus, and now we're looking at a project in Glendale, and they're talking about a long 77th Avenue, which is the bottom of the hill, uh, with all the water, rainwater rushing down from Forest Park and Myrtle Avenue, and they're talking about a budget for that project will be more than $60 million, and it's in preliminary design now. Ridgewood, higher ground. Um, Frank Principe and Paul did some work to try to relieve flooding in Ridgewood years ago. So Ridgewood has not had the flooding problems that the other communities have had. But not much of Ridgewood is at the bottom of the hill, so to speak. Fresh Pond Road, to an extent, is. So we have eight new board members. Four of our members didn't reapply. And I'm very, very happy because we need Maspeth board members. And we need, and of course we want all 
board members to be good, but we need mass with board members. And Frank Principe's grandson, Chris Herman, is now a member of Community Board 5. So Frank is a legend in this area, and especially in Maspeth, and was chairman of the board from 1995 to 2002, uh, or thereabout. And when your grandfather became chairman of the board, the amazing thing is he was 86 years old, because I know he was born in 09. He was 86 and sharp when he became chairman of the community board. So don't count out people over 80, right, Peggy? Right. <laughs> I'm almost 86. Um, we, we've had a lot of difficulty with some dirty conditions recently. Um, sanitation, Q5 Sanitation's done a wonderful job, but the mayor has put a lot of money with the city council into more cleaning. So dump out locations um, like Cypress Avenue near the Jackie Robinson Parkway, the people were talking about uh, the Ridgewood Reservoir, the route to the Ridgewood Reservoir. Well, if you continue from Cooper Avenue and go past the reservoir, you'll, you, on Cypress Avenue and you go to Cypress Hill Street, there's a lot of dumping consistently in front of that Jewish cemetery and the Jackie Robinson Parkways across the street. But sanitation has really been doing way better at not letting that accumulate. And uh, Paul, um, I think we conquered uh, the old Capital One Bank's garbage problem for now. I know it's a party place. I understand the supermarket's going to open up there. Well, I'll believe it when I see it. So no. there's a Capital One Bank on Forest Avenue at 70th Avenue in Ridgewood. There is a Ridgewood Presbyterian Church property right next to the, the former Capital One Bank that's now a party place. And uh, they were not having their garbage collected and rats running around and all that sort of thing. So uh, we got in touch with the owners, we got in touch with the vendor, we got in touch with the carter, and Mr. T. Carding did us a lot of good in picking up right before Easter. Um, I got them to pick up on Good Friday night going into S Holy Saturday because the normal pickup there is Easter Sunday. But I mean mountains of garbage right next to the church property. And not only is that a church property, but the Ridgewood Older Adult Senior Center meets there. So, as you all know, when you have problem neighbors, you have a lot of problems. So, I welcome the new board members, and uh, if uh, you need help with anything, please call the board office. We'll do our best to help you. And I want to talk about fortitude. Um, who, you said somebody... Library in Fortitude. 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 Jasmine Valley is due May 26th. I'm going to embarrass you a little bit. And she's, she's showing. So God bless Jasmine. She's, she got here and she says to me, Gary, I'll try to be here next month, but I don't know. So Jasmine, thank you for your fortitude. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. G. I'd like to um, introduce the elected official representatives. I'm going to ask them a favor. If it's not serious, not hot, not really something we have to act on, please submit it in writing, say hello, and, and submit it in writing to the board. So we have no one from the mayor's office, correct? Okay, there's no one from the mayor's office. We have no one from the controller's office. We have no one from the public advocate's office. And Claire from the borough presence, Claire, anything quick? Two seconds. Two seconds? <laughs> I don't know, Vince. Um, <laughs> hi, guys. <laughs> Hey Gary. Hi guys, my name is Claire Collins. I'm a community board liaison for the office of Queensborough President Donovan Richards. It's nice to see everyone, especially the new people, because I interviewed you over the phone and now I get to see what you look like. Uh, so what's up? Um, 
Uh, yeah, so we're proud to announce that we have appointed 117 new appointees throughout all of the 14 boards. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, and if you have any questions about the process, you can feel free to reach out. I'm going to leave some business cards over there. Um, okay. We have a couple of events coming up. This Friday is the State of the Borough. You could submit those, okay? <laughs> Okay, yeah, the, this Friday is the State of the Borough. Uh, the tickets are sold out, but you can watch online, queensbp.org. Uh, and then on Wednesday, April 17th at 6 o'clock, uh, oh wait, yeah, we're marking the end of Ramadan uh, with the Eid al-Fitr celebration at Borough Hall. And then um, we're having a, an event on the 26th uh, for high school and college students for them to unwind and socialize. It's called Sweats and Sweets for Youth and Young Adults. And that's going to be from 3 to 7 p.m. at Queensborough Hall. And lastly, on Tuesday, April 30th, we're hosting a parent advisory board meeting at 6 p.m. That's going to be virtual. And yeah, that's it. As usual, you can RSVP to events at queensbp.org slash RSVP. Thank, Thank you. you. Kate Bohm from the yeah. Borough President's, uh, or, I'm no. sorry, the District Attorney's Office. Okay, I heard you. You don't want to hear from me. <laughs> My name is Kate Bame. I'm available to help if anybody needs any help with the District Attorney's Office. Gary has all my contact information. I will submit my statement in writing, and I hope it is shared with you all. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Um, from Nydia, uh, Congressperson Nydia Velez Office, Jonathan, short and sweet. What was that? What was the name that you spoke? I'll keep it very short and sweet, folks. Uh, good evening. Uh, just two things, since we're cutting it very short. Dory, nice to see you. Uh, Social Security. So the Social Security Administrator, the Commissioner, announced four key updates in their attempt to combat overpayments. I'll submit this all in writing. Long story short, they used to withheld 100% of your check if they overpaid you. Now they're going to bring it down to 10%. Uh, you now can, the max repayment plan will go from 36 months to 60 months. Um, keeping it short, we're also looking for community project funding. Last fiscal year, the Congresswoman secured $11 million for community projects. So if you're a nonprofit, you have an idea, feel free to call our office at 718-599-3658. And if you need any assistance with a federal agency, call our office. Thank you, and I'll submit everything in writing. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. No one from Congressperson Meng's office. Um, from Bob Holden's office, Charlie, short and sweet. Are you here, Charlie? Oh, you hide in the back. At the, you lost time walking up here. <laughs> that comes off your time. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm here for Councilmember Holden. My name's Charlie. Councilmember Holden will do several bills to enhance public safety and quality of life. Here are the bills. Implementing regulations to reduce light pollution in residential districts. Requiring the NYPD to revisit and modify the procedures to distinguish between civil violations and criminal offenses more clearly. Mandating that police officers carry noise meters to effectively enforce noise pollution laws. Repeal of the diaphragm bill passed in 2020, and that's a big one because that doesn't let the police do their job effectively with that diaphragm bill in place. Establishing a task force to address derelict houses and neglected properties. Prohibiting the sale of smoke-related paraphernalia within close proximity to schools. Creating a task force to investigate the prevalence of out-of-state license plates and ensure compliance with local regulations. Revoking tobacco and e-tobacco licenses for stores found selling cannabis illegally. And we have many more, but I won't get into that now. We have some events coming up. This Friday at noon, join us at the corner of 77th Place at Juniper, Park, Juniper Valley Road in Middle Village for a street co-naming ceremony in memory of EMS Hilda Venata, who drastically passed away from 9-11 related causes. On Saturday at 1 p.m., we we're on a patrolman Charles Reynolds by co-naming Catalpa Avenue at 62nd Street near the 104th Precinct as patrolled Charles Reynolds Way. 
partnering with Mass with Federal Savings and others on Saturday, April 20th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Grand Avenue 69th Street, featuring e-waste recycling, paper shredding, etc. Also on Saturday, April 20th at 1 p.m., we're conning the corner of Remsen Place and Perry Avenue in Mass Pith in honor of local war hero Stanislaus Kazakowski. Join us in the MTA on Tuesday, April 23rd from 1 to 3 p.m. at Mass Pith Federal Savings for a bus network redesign outreach and MetroCard event. Join our office and the DOT for free helmet fitting distribution event at Juniper Valley Park on Saturday, April 27th from 11 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And I have some flyers I'll leave on the table over there. Thank Thanks. you. <laughs> Representing uh, Council Member Ariola, Linda Fogel. Linda, anything? Yell louder. I'm going to try to make it really quick. Um, the most important things are is that Councilwoman is against the city of yes. She voted no for it. She was at a meeting yesterday. That's paraphrasing what they sent me. Um, there's some events coming up in Glendale. I have some flyers on the table. Uh, most importantly, there's going to be a summer kickoff at Atlas Park in June. Details will be coming soon. Contact our office. I'll give you the number at the end of this conversation. There's also a rain barrel giveaway in Glendale Community Garden. Uh, tomorrow, the councilwoman is introducing legislation to hold the migrants accountable if they start to attack any first responders. They won't be out until it's jail time announcement. Okay, also, we stand with the NYPD and any first responders. We are collecting flags. If you want to uh, do a donation of the red line flags or the blue line, contact our office, and we're going to try to get them in the hands of every fire department and police department throughout the city. Anything else, the phone number is 718-738-1083, and I will definitely make sure I get this and all the flyers to your office tomorrow. Thank you. No one represented Council Member Gutierrez. Uh, representing Joe Adabo, a state senator, John D'Angelo. He's going to be fast and yeah. to the point. To walk here and talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good evening. The senator sends his regards. He was actually in the district earlier, but he's either going back to Albany tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, upcoming events, I'll just send to the office, but there's one this Saturday. Uh, um, this Saturday, 10 to 1, shops at Atlas Park, paper shredding and household recycling. And there'll be another one, but thank you. That's usually a big event, folks. Yeah. Congratulations to all the new members. Okay. So representing Senator Michael Janaris, Irene. Update on the Senate. Um... According to, oh, so we actually rallied for the MENA bill, uh, the Middle Eastern and Northern African communities in, in, um, regarding state data. Uh, we supported security funding for religious schools. Uh, pa we passed a bill on lobbying and state office nominations. And, and another bill. It's not ours. Adultery could soon be legal in New York. Thank you. Thank you. No one representing Senator Salazar. Assembly Member Hevesy, we have Kevin. Kevin, you're always quick and to the point. I know that. Yeah, I'll try my best. Um, thank you. Kevin Wisniewski with Assemblyman Hevesy's office. Um, first, just want to thank everyone who came to our Middle Village mobile office hours despite some weather challenges uh, last month. Um, we have a couple of community cleanups in the works. Um, our next two will be Rigo Park this Saturday at PS 139 um, and then Forest Hills Sunday along Metropolitan Avenue. Both cleanups start at 10 a.m. You can email us for more specific information. Um, and I know we're also speaking with some folks in this room about organizing additional events in Glendale, Kew Gardens, and Middle Village. Um, just very quickly, 50 volunteers have come out already, and we've had 25 students claim volunteer service hours. Um, there's a lot of DOT issues to report on, but we'll um, submit that in writing as well as budget updates. Um, that's it from us for tonight. Have a good night and uh, talk soon. Thank you. 
Um, I'm sorry, I, everything's going on over here. Assembly person Raga, we have Dolma. Dolma's always quick and to the point. We're gonna get you roller skates. Good evening, everyone. Dolma Lama, Director of Committee Affairs at the Office of Assembly Member Stephen Raga. Congratulations to all the new appointed board members. Uh, welcome. Uh, quickly, we're, if you have not filed your taxes yet, we have a free tax prep this Saturday uh, from 9 to 4 at our district office. We also have a couple cleanups uh, at um, Woodside and, and Roosevelt Avenue. I'll send uh, the details to your community board. And Grand Avenue Street Fair. Uh, we're joining Grand Avenue Street Fair on, 420, uh, on April 27th. So everyone, please encourage your small businesses to come out and, and table in the Grand Avenue Street Fair. We'll be there as well. Thank you. Thank you. And representing Juan Ordilla is Brenda. Hello everyone, my name is Brenda and I'm the constituent liaison representing Assembly Member Juan Ardilla. The member and myself hope everyone is having a great evening. Before we begin, I'd like to extend a heartfelt congratulations to Moore Shores Bookshore on its inclusion in the New York State Historic Business Pre Preservation Re Registry. Assembly Member Ardilla proudly nominated this establishment which has faithfully served Ridgewood for over 70 years. In Albany, the Assembly Member has joined his colleagues in fighting for a fair and progressive state budget that addresses our affordable housing crisis, a budget that keeps our schools fully funded, and one that helps bring down the cost of living for New Yorkers. Assembly Member Ardilla has fought hard to undo the proposed changes to foundation aid, which would have effectively cut foundation aid funding for half the schools in New York, particularly those in low-income communities. We are proud to share that last week, Governor Huchel announced that she is removing her proposed changes to foundation aid, which means our public schools will remain fully funded. The member also pushed for an inclusion of $250 million for housing access voucher programs, $40 million for home owner protection pro program, tenant pr protections, and enhanced labor standards like prevailing wages for affordable housing construction to be included in any housing package that gets included in the final budget. Additionally, the member has signed on to legislation that would legalize accessory dwelling units and bills like the NY Heat Act, which could save wind New up, Yorkers. Wind up and submit that to the office, please. Sure. Um, which could save New Yorkers over $100 each month for their energy bills. The member knows that these and other items such as tier six re reform and unwatered down version of Sammy's law are vital for the residents of this district. This is why he will keep returning to Albany and continue to fight until he sees a state budget that truly serves his, consi his constituents. The member will also fight for more trash cans in the community and push for more street tra traffic calming measures as well. There are still openings available in our office to acknowledge and honor outstanding students within our community. If you know of an elementary or high school student that meets this criteria, please call us at the office, 718-784-3194. Thank, Thank you so you. much. No one representing uh, Assemblywoman Raj Kumar. Um, representing Catalonia Cruz, Thomas. Nice and quick, Thomas. And submit your written. Hello, everyone. My name is Thomas Erringer. I'm the communications coordinator for Assemblywoman Catalina Cruz. I'm going to keep this very short. This Saturday, we're teaming up with Assemblyman Hevesy's team for a community cleanup alongside 63rd Drive in Regal Park. And then next Friday, April 19th, we're going to be hosting a job fair at the Regal Park Library from 12 to 3 p.m. And we invite anyone to come if they have any interest. And that's all. I'll keep it very short. Thank you. Very good. No one from the 104. Did we hear from uh, Derek Jasmine yet, DCP? Out here? Okay. Nothing? Okay. Thank you. Wendy, you got two seconds. All right. You're done. I want to say hello and good evening. As soon as I get to this room, I know for sure this is a wonderful board. Look at each of you. We are energetic. We pay attention to our community. Oh, by the way, 
My name is Wendy Lee. I'm the judge of the Civil Court of the City of New York, and I have been on the bench for the past six years. Uh, uh, like all of you, I used to serve on the local community board. It's a volunteer work. And it's so fascinating to see so many young people here. That's what we need. <laughs> Under the leadership of our chair and our vice chair and our board members, I believe our, this community board, CB5, will be the best community board in New York City. And thank you so much for your service. Thank you for your support. You. With that, we'll go to committee reports. Um, first committee we have is Transportation and Public Transit Services. Who's giving that report? Mr. Chair, would you like us to vote on the motion first that was tabled at the last meeting? Yeah, the table goes first, correct. Okay. Yeah. So repeat that, uh, new, new members. Less, so for the new members, and as a recap for all the uh, members who were here, last month the, uh, I presented a committee report, and the committee recommended uh, to the full board to ratify a report, uh, which would be a letter to the DOT asking the DOT to perform a study uh, on Cypress Avenue and Vermont Place leading to the Ridgewood Reservoir for pedestrian access, cycling access, and, and frankly, overall safety in the corridor. Uh, that was tabled, uh, and now here we are today. Uh, the committee reiterates that report and recommendation and presents that to the full board for its consideration. Okay. Show of hands. The committee, you're gonna have to, all right. Mr. G. So today you had some, some people come and talk about the need for safer access to the Rigid Reservoir and to uh, Highland Park. Uh, Rigid Reservoir is part of Highland Park and the Rigid Reservoir is maybe about 58 acres, about as big as Juniper Park. So this recommendation, I don't think it was pretty clear, is to have the Department of Transportation do a study with the um, goal of providing safer access for pedestrians and cyclists to um, the Ridge Reservoir in Highland Park, especially via Cypress Avenue in Vermont Place. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. All right. Any discussion? Okay. We are going to call the roll. Mr. Halla. Yeah. One of the things that we spoke about when it presented last so one of the items that we spoke about last month, the one that came up and the reason it was tabled, is that there are only a few roads that cross from Queens to Brooklyn from Bushwick Avenue all the way to Woodhaven Boulevard. And there are only two really from this area of Ridgewood and Glendale, Cypress Avenue and Cypress Hill Street. Cypress Hill Street com currently has bike lanes on it and it backs up about three quarters of a mile because it could be at least three lanes if not four, but one lane in each direction, it backs up. This roadway could be potentially three or four lanes if it was managed correctly, it's not. So I think it definitely needs to be studied, but if Cypress Hill Street, which has much less traffic, backs up almost to Myrtle Avenue. It doesn't go to Myrtle Avenue yet, but it crosses Cooper Avenue and it goes through Durham Park and it gets pretty close down to Myrtle Avenue. If that block which uses, that street which uses much, has much less traffic than Cypress Avenue can back up that far, there's a lot of potential for this one backing up. So the proposal is one lane in each direction when I look at the drawing that, that they're proposing. The intersection at Cooper and, and Cypress Avenue is bad, and I think a lot of the traffic is because of that. But the problem here is once they, may, once they pass one of these street changes, and it clearly does not work, like it doesn't work on Cypress Hill Street, 
Cypress Hill Street is not nearly as busy as this, and you can't get up it in the afternoon, and you can't get down it in the morning. And I would like to see a proposal to say, look, you've changed it. It's failed. It's clearly failed. Everybody knows it's failed. Would you reverse it on Cypress Hill Street? And I think that's certainly legitimate if you're going to have slow traffic on Cypress Avenue, will you remove the bike lanes from Cypress Hill Street where it clearly does not work? No bicycles use it. I go up and down there all the time. It's very rare that I see a bicycle on it, yet you inconvenience thousands and thousands of drivers because they just can't get up the street in the afternoon and they can't get down the street in the morning. So okay. Okay. if you can propose to do it on one, can you, can you ever remove it once someone puts it in? Thank you. Donald, do you have something? I would just quickly want to say that one of the reasons they usually narrow these things down from four lanes down to one lane is because of traffic calming. Originally, there's probably too many people speeding over that bridge and over the hill, and they thought by narrowing it down that would help. So now they have to really, what we want the proposal to do is have them look over the whole thing and decide what they really should do. Possibly at the end, they need to spread it out so that when people come down the hill, there's a place to turn left and place to turn right and so forth. It definitely needs to be looked at, but, you know, when you're driving, you deserve what you get. When you have uh, too many lanes and the people are speeding over it, you're just inviting yourself to end up with a narrowing down. Okay. Thank you. So, go ahead. Repeat the answer. It's a study. Uh, then we have another question. Oh, well, I don't see it. All right. Daniel? Okay, yes. Um, so this is just a point of uh, clarity, possibly for, uh, for transportation chair. So are we asking DOT for a study, uh, a comprehensive study, or is there a recommendation already on the table? Because I think I heard something to that effect. I just want to confirm that we're not voting on a plan. We're asking for a plan to be formulated. We are voting for a study of the corridor for the DOT engineers and experts to study for the best path forward in addressing the corridor. Thank you. Move the question, please. Okay. You ready? Yeah. We shall vote. Mr. Arcuri. Four. Carol Benevic Bradley. Four. Jessica Boyardi. Four. Eric Beckowitz. Four. Rachel Karachi. Four. Maritza Carmona. Ethan Chan. More. Deepak Chowdhury. More. Elizabeth Chen. More. Walter Clayton. More. Patricia Crowley. More. Dimitro Fedkowski. More. Dory Figliola. More. Maddie Gonzalez. More. Gail Grabowski. More. Fred Haller. More. Daniel Heredia. More. Christopher Herman. Fred Hoverley, Paul Kersner, Mary Ann Latanzio, Four. Diego LeCleary, Four. Ed Latow, Kathy Massey, Four. Naho Matsuzama, this is, uh, Matsuzawa, absent, right? Um, Charles Ober, Four. Peggy O'Kane, Michael O'Kane. Don Passantino. Four. Ted Renz. Four. Luis Rodriguez. Four. Enrique Rosa. Four. Lee Rottenberg. Four. Walter Sanchez. Four. Lily Scarabino. Four. Dennis Steffen. Four. Catazina Sita. Four. Barbara Toscano. Four. Patrick Trinchese. Four. Jasmine Valley. Mariana Zero. Four. Get everybody? Thank you. Donald, we're good. A couple brief updates. The, we were reached out to, uh, and by we I mean the board, by the New York Community Aviation Roundtables. This has been ongoing for many years, and it seems they're starting up again. From, my, from our understanding, their primary concern is aircraft noise. And as a community board, we have a seat on the committee. And every community board does, the elected officials do, et cetera. So we will be, as a committee, sending a representative 
who will be keeping us, because uh, uh, we get a vote in, 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 uh, in the round table. So I'll keep everyone updated if something of note happens, but we do have representation now again. We did in the past, we do again in the Community Aviation Roundtable. The DOT, and now I know this is a, a topic of concern for a lot of people here, dining out. This is street-side dining. Uh, a new program, a new permit process is beginning soon. August is really the start date for this. Uh, so it's, it's a drastic change, a drastic departure from how it was done before, but here's the important piece for us here. It involves the community board now. So when people put a permit, there's a comment period. The community board gets the comment. So now we have a say in what's being erected on the streets in our community board. And we're going to work on that as a committee and keep everyone abreast of what's going on. Uh, finally, last topic, traffic and pedestrian safety requests. For all the new board members, we hear a whole slew of these every month at the Transportation Committee meetings. If you see a dangerous condition in the neighborhood, please report it to the community board office and we'll put it on the agenda, we'll discuss it, we'll see if we could do something about it to make the conditions better and safer for everybody. Our next meeting is April 30th, that's a Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. at the Community Board 5 office, and if you can make it, I hope to see you there. Thank you. Thank you. Next committee, do we have any report from Park Services? No report. Sanitation Services, do we have a report? Okay, uh, we met uh, on Thursday, March 21st, and we discussed the illegal dumping situations. We have um, along Troutman Street between Underdunk and Woodward, and also uh, be on Underdunk at the corner of Flushing and Troutman, and Myrtle Avenue at Putnam Avenue. Um, they're being watched by sanitation police. We have no um, problem on Fresh Pond Road with dumpsters with illegal dumping because we got rid of all the litter baskets and now there was no abuse. Um, because what was happening is people were bringing their household refuse when they were going to the train at uh, Fresh Pond. When we got rid of the baskets, the problem was resolved. Um, and we also have an illegal dumping problem at 614 Woodward Avenue um, at Woodward and DeKalb. The problem there is that the, 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 it is an abandoned building, and that building is now in litigation, in foreclosure. There is a slumlord who owns it. He owns many properties around the city. He's one of the top ten in the city. And um, until that gets litigated properly, and um, the city will then be able to demolish the property. Unfortunately, the, the, that piece of property is so small that the only thing that can be put there is uh, off-street parking for the residents of uh, DeKalb Avenue, and that's what, probably what will happen there. Um, um, let's see. All right, so Ted, Ted Renz has a litter basket problem on Myrtle Avenue well in hand. They have plenty of, um, Ted, you want to address how often you do that? We have seven days pick up and then extra pick up. Uh, Microphone, please. Ted, Ted. Ted. The Myrtle Avenue bid has a seven day pickup of, uh, from the 12 to 8 tour usually. And then we have extra pickups on most days uh, during the week. Mondays and Thursdays, which is a regular collection day, when they service the residents above the stores, they'll pick up the, the corner basket. The other days are covered in the afternoon. And, and of course, we have a relationship directly with the super. If there's someone dumps something in the district, uh, if they have an MLP truck available, it'll get usually done very quickly. And if it can't be done, we have the relationship with the super. He'll let you know when it will be done. Yeah. And if worse comes to worse, we can always go to Eric's father, who will take care of it. Oh, that's right. That's okay. Um, all righty. All right. Let's talk about the rat problem. Um, the rat problem 
I mean, the, the, the city, the mayor has now appointed a rat czar. Whatever problems we have with rats have to be addressed through that mechanism. This is not a sanitation issue. It is a rat issue, and the mayor, of course, hates, hates rats. So I guess what we have to do is ask the mayor to, um, to address that issue at specific locations that we have, and I will not bore you with what they are, Summerfield Street and, um, well, there in particular. So uh, that's what we have to do. We're going to have to get, uh, get, the, um, get the problem. Yeah, it is a regional problem. It is a problem because that's where you got a lot of people. You know, you're not going to have a rat problem in Middle Village or in, in Glendale. Um, so, Can we? and I guess that's it. That's it on Thank the issue. Thank you. Oh, I just wanted to mention one other thing too on on um, separating of uh, organic material for collection. Um, there is a product on the market. My wife just bought it. It's called L-O-M-I-L, Lomil. -L, and it costs about mm, it's less than $100. Actually, what you do, you plug it in, and it takes your, your putraceable waste that you would normally put out organically in those containers. You don't need them anymore. You, you get this thing, you put your garbage right in there, and it turns it into compost immediately, and you can put it out in the yard. Thank you. That's the way to go. Thank you. On this side. Hi, I just want to uh, identify yourself, please. Kathy Massey, I also co-chair the sanitation committee with Paul, and I just want to go back to the issue of the rats. It was a big part of our meeting, and there were many homeowners there that were very uh, disturbed because they talked about this issue and it seems to be very serious. Now, if we can handle it under the sanitation committee, maybe we need to refer this to the health committee and get something moving or done about this issue. I mean, I don't think it's just Ridgewood that it's, you know, it's all of the community. There's been an increase problem. over the year. It's a citywide problem and we need to do something as a community board to get the ball rolling and try to correct this best we can. Thank you. Who's over there? Identify yourself. You need a microphone. I can't give you this one. Hello? Um, Paul, I got a question. Identify yourself. Uh, Marion Latanzio Maspeth. <laughs> um, at the last meeting when the Department of Sanitation... You're asking the chair a question? Yes, chair. Last meeting when the Department of um, Sanitation was here, after the meeting, spoke to him about the public school putting garbage out in clear bags. He said it wasn't, that wasn't the rules. I wrote to the principal and C, uh, CC, the superintendent, about PS 229 on Maurice Avenue in Maspeth. The rat problem is ridiculous. He told me he would be taken care of, yet as of tonight, the garbage is still put out in clear bags. The clear bags are not even as thick as the black bags. So we have to deal with the Department of Education on how they're handling their garbage because the city has already taken care of commercial by putting the boxes in front of uh, stores and side pickup garbage trucks. So we have to work on that. Mr. The, Kersner. On that issue, the problem with dealing with a city agency the sanitation department will not summons a sister agency. Of course not. So, why would you bill yourself? Well, and that's why there's not going to be any enforcement there. Okay. Uh, I'm Thank not you. disagreeing with you. All Thank I'm saying you. is enforcement is not going to take care of this. Okay. Thank you. Yes, identify yourself, please. Hello. Hi, Jess Boyardi, Middle Village. Two things, the rat problem, while Paul said it's only in Ridgewood, I'm an avid runner and I run through all the neighborhoods in our community board and I see them everywhere. And let me tell you, they're not fun to run along. So it is definitely a problem beyond Ridgewood. Uh, I have a question about the overpass on 80th Street. So that overpass that runs across to Atlas. 
the steps that go down as well as that overpass is full of litter and there's no trash bins anywhere on one side or the other. I'm just wondering who is really in charge of that and if there's anything that can be done about that, no one's in charge. Ms. Mr. Giordano had gotten that taken care of several times. Okay, great. So just remind him, <laughs> give him a buzz, he'll take care of it. So he's got to get them together, okay? I can send you an email just to remind Thank you. Me. Thank you. Housing services, do we have a report? No? Are there any other committees that I failed to recognize for reports? I can't. You got a microphone, please? Address the chair, tell them who you are, what you want. Patrick Trincasey, the uh, Liquor License and Cannabis Committee. Uh, Gary, we had an issue with one of the liquor licenses from the uh, that applied. Did we want to vote on that? I don't think so. It was uh, Elm, what was that? I don't think so. You heard it. You did all the right, right? Bermeo Food Corp, El Manaba Restaurant. What? That was an issue for the 104. Behind you. Behind you. John Meyer, staff. Uh, I actually handle all the SLA applications coming into the office. We usually then send the same list that the board gets to the 104. We've had many instances with El Manaba on St. Nicholas. Uh, there's been numerous fights that have broken out inside, spilled outside. There's literally been attacks and violent attacks that have not been reported by the business, though the business employees are looking out on the street watching it happen. Um, we've had a lot of problems here. They tried to expand illegally during the uh, pandemic into the second floor where they do not have a license for. Um, just ongoing issues and they brought it back to our attention. We also, the board did a vote in I think November or December against an all night permit for New Year's. So this is an opportunity for us to talk to the SLA. Um, we don't do this too often where we're voting in opposition to certain locations, but this is one of those pro problem places. So Patrick, can you make a motion to oppose the renewal? Yeah, so, so I want to make a motion to oppose this renewal for El Manabo. And do we have a second, Marianne? I'm Mary Lynn Tans, you will second the motion. All right. Uh, discussion? Paul. 341 um, St. Nicholas. Saint Nicholas Avenue. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's right by the whole, you know, Myrtle Wyckoff Palmetto. Mr. Arcuri. Oh, all right. Diego. Uh, Diego LeClary from Ridgewood. Um, just to be clear, this place has been the site of uh, criminal violence and reports to the precinct. Just so I get a sense of the reasons for us to reject its renewal application, these are recent. Just is there more information we can get about? Um, John? Yeah, it would be good if you grabbed the mic. The, the place is a real problem. Diego. It's connected to K&K Buff Super Buffet, so it has that parking lot out back. We've had reports until like 5, 6 in the morning with them carrying the party out from the bar to the parking lot with communities all around complaining about the large volume of their cars, et cetera, et cetera. This is, this is a known location to just be generally kind of treating the neighborhood in a really horrific way. Uh, the violence issues have been up until as recently as this last fall. Thank you. Uh, just to add to that, so from the 104th Precinct, what we got is the problem, uh, the location is problematic and the authority is well aware. 
supposedly they are putting a case together based on all the incidents. So it's pretty well established. Okay. All right. All right, Mr. Arcuri. Carol Benovic Bradley. Jessica Boyardi. Four. Eric Berkowitz. Four. Rachel Karachi. Maritza Carmona. Four. Ethan Chan had to go. Deepak Chowdhury. Four. Elizabeth Chen. Four. Walter Clayton. Four. Patricia Crowley. Four. Dimitro Fitkowski. Four. Dory Figliola. Four. Matty Gonzalez. Four. Gail Grabowski. Four. Fred Haller. Four. Daniel Heredia. Four. Chris Herman. Oh, he had a lady. Okay. Fred Hofferly. Four. Paul Kersner. Four. Marianne Latanzio. Four. Diego Leclerc. Four. Kathy Massey. Four. Charles Ober. Four. Peggy O'Kane. Four. Michael O'Kane. Four. Don Passantino. Four. Ted Renz. Four. Luis Rodriguez. Four. Enrique Rosa. Four. Lee Rottenberg. Four. Walter Sanchez. Lily Scarabino, Four. Dennis Steffen, Katarzyna Sita, Four. Barbara Toscano, Four. Patrick Trinchese, Four. Jasmine Valley, Mariana Zero. Four. Thank you. Thank you. Did I miss any other committees? Okay. Next order of business is old or new business. Any old business we forgot. We already took care of the one on um, that. Any new business under new business. We have an election coming up in June. So we start nominations now this month. Um, on the, we'll give Gary a little time to catch up. Uh, meantime. Huh? Oh, May. I'm sorry. My months are confused. So nominations in May. So think about who you want to nominate <coughs> for all, every office is available. And by the way, we're all, we've all been term limited. In the past, people would go forever, but we all now are term limited. Uh, Peggy O'Kane? We have... You hear me now? We have a new office this year, parliamentarian. So people should start thinking who wants to be the parliamentarian and who they would like to be the parliamentarian. This is under the new bylaws. We haven't voted for that before. That will be an independent officer, not part of the executive committee. Read your, minute, read your bylaws. They're not that long anymore. Uh, and every four years, there will be an in, a parliamentary committee that will recommend possible changes to the bylaws. So the bylaw, the parliamentarian is to be an independent officer to rule on motions of procedure and uh, decorum. So start thinking about who you want for the, the parliamentarian and not me. After three years on the bylaw committee, it's not my... I'm a little tired of it. So Thank what you're you. saying is that the executive committee cannot appoint the parliamentarian? No, he's voted for That's separately. The, okay. Or she is voted for separately. But is not be a member of the bylaws. So we the, have to modify our bylaws? They're, no, they're in the new bylaws. Uh, it's in okay. the new bylaws. The executive committee has the same composition as it has now, but there will be a new independent non-executive committee member officer who will be the parliamentarian. So people should start thinking about who wants to be it and who you want to nominate for okay. parliamentarian. Thank you. Any other new business? When is the next meeting? No kidding. Uh. Do we have a date? No holidays, no holy days, no nothing? 
Okay, so the next meeting is May 8th, uh, probably the same location, same time you will be notified. For our Muslim brothers and sisters, uh, I guess it's a happy Idiya fear. Enjoy the feast. Um, do I have a motion to close? All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you.